Now, I mentioned just now that uh, we'll be doing all the New Testament and the Quran. You might ask to yourself, Quran? Which Quran? What do you mean by Quran? Well, by Quran, we actually mean the earliest Judeo-Arabic liturgical dramas for Ishmaelites, which became the Quran. Okay, we have to call it the Quran because that's the way it's most commonly known by people. <clears throat> if I had my own way, I'd call it the Asana Hadith all the time, but nobody would know what I'm talking about. So I have to, to I have to talk about the Quran, but I'm making it clear what I mean by that. It's not actually the original Arabic Quran was something different. It's a Christian text which is still being used by Christians today and has been completely rejected by the Muslims. But these uh, Judeo-Arabic litur liturgical dramas were adopted by the Muslims and became known as by Muslims as the Quran, even though they were never the Quran. So, um, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Judeo-Arabic liturgical dramas. Now, our Judeo-Arabic inter interpretation of such, such texts reveals that these texts were written by people uh, uh, who knew about the Pavlut tradition, about this evangelism that we're talking about, this kosher um, sort of form of Judaism for Gentiles. And we do not consider them, these texts, to be divine scripture um, at all. And the Judeo-Arabic interpretations are unimaginably different from what you've been used to. Okay, whether you are coming from a Christian apologetic sort of approach condemning the Quran or whether you're a Muslim. Either way, our interpretations are unimaginably different. Okay, so whatever you think you know about the Quran, you don't know about the Jewish version of it. All right, the original Jewish version of it uh, from what from which the, the Quran was sort of, um, well, the Islamic Quran was plagiarized. For example, we demonstrate that the word Muhammad means Jesus and that they say that uh, God does have a son. Okay, that's what we show. And we've already made some videos about this topic and we'll be covering it in more detail in the future. Bezerat Hashem, God's help. So now, is Pavlut then the same as Ish Islamism? Is it the same thing? No. But the Ishmaelite faith from which Abbasid Islam took many ideas was certainly Pavlut, okay? Certainly it was. So Pavlut comes first and then Abbasid Islam takes all sorts of ideas from it and, 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 and creates a new religion. But in the seventh century, it's Pavlut. And there is plenty of evidence for this, which has been discussed in other videos, and more will be made in the future, okay? We are going to look into that more. The Ishmaelites were described as praying in synagogues, which faced the Ishmaelite homeland of Nebiot. Remember Nebiot, whose sister married Esau? Where is that homeland? In uh, Hijaz? No, nowhere near. It's in the Negev, it's around Petra area. And their religion was described as a form of Judaism for Gentiles, very specifically. They were mere Phisites. That's how they believed in the Messiah. They believed in the Messiah, but they had a mere, mere Phisite view on him. And they preserved the stylite system of the three Simons, because the three Simons were stylites. They had this, this way of living in towers, in, 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 in sort of pillars next to the, the synagogues, the, these for, the synagogues for the, um, uh, for the Gentiles. With, uh, so these, this tradition has been preserved with the minarets and minbars, of mosques, which you are familiar with, and they were preserved that way long after other Christians had lost such traditions. So um, living in your um, tower next to the, next to the uh, synagogue, um, this, is, uh, this is what the, the, the Jewish leaders of the movement, movement did, like the Three Simons, and that's why they still have these towers there for the Azan. What is the word Azan? The call to prayer, right? But actually, it comes from the word hazan. Hazan means the one who leads the prayers in Judaism. So the one who leads the prayers used to stay in the tower. That was the Azan's tower. Okay? It's Judaism. Uh, it's not Judaism for Jews, but it's a form of Judaism for Gentiles. You can call it Noahism, if you like. So was Jesus Christ Hashem or just a rabbi? For the Jews, he is 
uh, at least a rabbi and possibly a tzaddik, okay, for the Jews who teach this, okay? But that does not change the fact that he was still promoted in this tradition, in Pavlut, to Hasidei Omat Olam as an appearance of the lesser Hashem, Yeshua Sar Hapanim, okay? Who was not conceived, but simply appeared inside of Miriam's womb. Nevertheless, the Jews who taught all about this normally seem to have regarded him as having been conceived halakhically to regular Jewish parents. Um, and it is normal for some Jews to regard their Rebbe's as appearances of Sar Hafanim, while others regard them as just regular people. So this dual way of looking at Jesus is completely normal in Judaism. Completely normal. And this dual way, specifically the way of seeing him as Sar Hafanim, that is for the Hasidei Omat Olam. And you can't be Hasidei Omat Olam without seeing him that way in this system. And if you don't see him that way, then uh, you don't get any benefit uh, from being Hasidei Omat Olam because you you cannot actually be Hasidei Omat Olam except being inside of this system because in order to be Hasidei Omat Olam you have to be in a system which was established before the end of the Sanhedrin, and this is the only system which was established for Hasidei Omat Olam before the end of Sanhedrin. If you're not in this system, then you're just children of Noah, Chochme Omat Olam, who are keeping the seven laws of Noah, which is fine, but you will be judged. You're not guaranteed a place in the world to come. But the Hasidei Omat Olam are guaranteed a place in the world to come, and in order to be them, you have to believe in Yeshua Sar Hapanim. You have to believe that uh, he was... Yeshua Sar Hapanim. If you don't believe that, you don't get that benefit. But you can be Jews if you don't believe that. You can be Jews if you don't believe that. But you'll have to go through a proper conversion to be a full Jew by proper ortho orthodox halakhic authorities. And even though you don't believe that, you will still have to encourage other people to believe that in order to be in this traditional system. So... Either way, you're going to have to have some room for it in your heart. You're going to have to have some room for it in your heart. You can't um, promote Pavlut uh, unless you have room for it in your heart to encourage the Hasidei Omat Olam to believe in it, even if you don't, okay? Even if you believe that uh, he was just a halakhic regular Jew conceived in a normal way to regular people. And he was a regular person himself. Okay, that's completely fine to believe that, but because we anyway believe in Sar Hapanim, anyway, whether whether he appeared or not, we still believe in him. He is our Messiah. So the important thing is that you believe in Sar Hapanim. You don't have to believe that Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ was Sar Hapanim. Okay, unless you are Hasdei Omat Olam, in which case you do have to believe that Jesus Christ was Sar Hapanim. Okay, so you've got. You've got uh, uh, no choice with regarding uh, belief in Sar Hapanim. You must. He is the Jewish Messiah. He's the righteous Messiah. Yinan, he was there uh, in, in the Talpiot before creation. He is the Spirit of God who hovered over the waters. You've got no choice. You have to believe in him. He's the Messiah. Okay? Uh, you don't have to believe that Jesus of Nazareth was an appearance of him. Okay? But if you are Hasdei Omat Ha'alam, you do have to believe that he was. So that's the system, how it works, okay? So there is plurality of, or, or flexibility in different, different opinion here. But uh, this is a religion, a form of Judaism for Gentiles. It's not Judaism for Jews. It's Judaism for Gentiles, okay? So it's a, it's a kosher form of Judaism specifically devised for Gentiles in the first century by the Chazal, by the sages under the authority of the Sanhedrin. Now, which Jews taught all about?